Although Lemmy, when you know, Hammond was released, as always, almost always with Lemmy, he was like, this is the best thing we've ever done and our most brilliant album and everything. Uh, later on, he kind of became a lot more ambivalent about it. And uh, in a documentary, so the Guts and the Glory, yeah, documentary, he said, yeah, he said, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. There's some good tracks on it, but there's some crap too. Um, I pretty much agree with that. It's a, For me, it's a very, very strange album, Hammered. Um, because the first track, Walker Crooked Mile, is really quite unusual for Motorhead. Uh, Lemmy kind of, he really stretches the comfort zone with the, the vocals. He harmonises himself. You don't show your hand, you better take it all away. Don't take it. He's, he's, yeah, he's harmonising himself, basically. doing So they they could never have done it on um, on live, I don't think. I don't know if they ever did it live. Someone once said he'd heard it, but I've never seen proof. I've never seen any video or heard any audio of them doing it live because you'd have needed two vocalists. And, you know, Phil Campbell was never going to be able to pull it off. The best Phil Campbell, I mean, Phil would be the first to admit that his voice is, you know, not that great. So he could kind of shout, you know, born to raise hell or something. But that's kind of the extent of it. Uh, but really, I really like that track. Um, and that, the solo bit. Dun, 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 dun. I always just imagine, like, whenever I hear it, I don't know, it's funny what music creates in your head, the images it creates in your head, but... I think they're like some old blues movie, like the Robert Robert Johnson type character, you know, if the hat and carrying his guitar walking along some sort of down to the dusty crossroads, you know, in the deep south. So I don't know why, I don't know why, it, because it's not, I mean, well, Motorhead, different, Motorhead's influences, Lemmy's influences, those are nod to the blues, but I mean, you wouldn't say it's a blues song. But yeah, I just imagine it, you know, and that walk a crooked mile in my shoes, babe. Yeah, really good. Um you were judging if you were tried for murder yeah i don't know if, if you were like out to lunch what would you eat and stuff like that some quite amusing lyrics on it yeah but just an interesting track and for that for su that for that reason it's occasionally compared to um another perfect day where the sort of motorhead step out from their usual you know what they're usually creating and they kind of as I say push the comfort zone a bit stretch the boundaries a bit but yeah really interesting um, track that one and number two straight down the line that and I really like that track brilliant uh, riff there from Phil Campbell wah, wah, wah. you know let me again you know see you later babe I've got to go I'm out the door and that sort of uh, theme but yeah really really good uh, really good track um Especially that riff, that wah, 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 almost like sad and, and more poignant and mocking at the same time, that guitar thing. Just something new, something new there, something fresh. Yeah, and, you know, and then, you know, hey, babe, I've got to go. I've got to go leave and all this sort of thing. Yeah, really good. Uh, three Brave New World. Well, let me say, I mean, this, they started recording for this. I think it was very soon after the um, September 11th, uh, September 11th attacks. Uh, 2001 it's about the time so let me said a lot of the um you know anger and the fear and despair or grief you know of that time permeates this album uh we said brave new world but brave new world's more like well the government taking too much control and all this sort of thing and you know, censoring everything and stuff which, oh, oh God, what would he make of things today? God. Oh, anyway. Man, enough of the censorship already and the lies in the media and the press. It's pathetic. Just report things impartially. Uh, Voices from the War. Yeah, I like it. has got that. <laughs> it's got that. Let me speak. His, again, he spits his disdain for humankind. Was You do not know anything. You do not care to know anything. And so the world is going to fuck you. <laughs> And they're uh, not, not appreciating the price. You know, the heroes that gave their lives in countless wars mean nothing to you. I'm paraphrasing. But Lemmy kind of knew that what we owe, especially with his you know, fascination with military history and especially like the, the First World War, which for the English definitely resonates because so much of the, well, so much of the population was lost. I'm not saying it's just England, you know. So many of us have suffered. I'm not saying any crap like that, but it's 
you know, like the, the over the top where just let me address that 1916, just a mass slaughter of soldiers and stuff. So it, that's the price that's been paid for freedom today. So don't take it lightly, you know, and be grateful and have gratitude to those that gave their lives in the past. It's the chimes there for five o'clock. Um, mine all mine. I can't really remember much about that. So I, 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 well, I know it's like a good time sort of boogie song. Uh, let's get those ones out there. Mine all mine. Dr. Love. I like the do, 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 do. I really like the, um, I really like the, uh, the riff for that. Sometime by me and I told her. And then the lyrics for me was just a bit, bit too, bit too cheesy, bit too naff for me. I, I wish Lemmy had sort of gone away, just drunk those lyrics. I think you can look up with something else, but you know, what do I know? Just me. Uh, yeah, no remorse. I, I, I can't even remember what that one. I, I vaguely remember some the chord sequence of it, but you know, it didn't. It's, for me, it's a meh track. Um, so let's go back to so mine. That was mine on mine. So not track number six. Uh, Shut your mouth. That's quite a good track, and that's um, I've seen this live on the German show, and yeah, well, well might be being live, it comes into its own, but. I heard it on the album, I thought, well, this is Metropolis, like, with a sort of weird verse bit. But um, then when I heard it live, I was like, ah, I get it. It's one of those tracks. Uh, yeah. Say what, no dance with you, no shit. Yeah, it's really good. He's on a, um, he's on a, it's a German show. And then I always think Lemmy's been really tall and that, and the, um, they finish. And they're really, infused, really great, really enthusiastic audience and stuff. And Lemmy obviously knows the show and, the presenter comes out. Let me please come here. Like that. <laughs> let me stand next to him. This guy, is, this presenter is so tall. And then he looks like really like small and meat compared to him. Thank you. That was so good. You guys going to come back? Yeah, really good. You're German. Well done, Germany. They always, they always looked after Motorhead and were loyal to Motorhead and kept Motorhead going at various stages of their career. Sadly, I can't say the same thing about England. Well, the, 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 the press and the, the powers that be fed their fans, obviously, but, uh, Germany always sort of has yeah, TV in the media and they pay the appropriate respect. Um, where was I? So, kill. Did I do kill the world in my. Uh, kill the world. We gotta get you home because you burned out. I don't know if I included that in my meh tracks, which I did just now, but. No, I didn't. No, there's only one. It's not even worth mentioning. Phil does this, this shimmering chord, and I've never been able to quite work out what it is. He sort of plays it through a wire, and I think he's just rocking his foot on the wire. Anyway, that's all I can remember of that. Uh, Dr. Lover did. No remorse. Yeah, that was one of the sort of more fillery ones for me. Um, yeah, so basically, from this album, from a very strong beginning two songs, it starts to go, it, it goes like that for me. Uh, with a couple of little bumps, like, ooh, like that. Um, one of those is Red Raw. That track is so heavy. And Lemmy just goes off on one. You know, load, quite a lot of verses in it. Uh, he must have been reading it. I mean, I memorised some of his lyrics. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Faces in the Rain, Killer Wants to Fall in Love. And all, all, really good. And then now he starts to feel good. Da, 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 da. Oh, blood is mine to take. He takes his fill and more. He sort of under tracks that. He does this really deep voice. Takes his fill and more. And then does his sort of higher voice, singing voice on the top of it. Yeah, really good. Really, really, really heavy. Yeah, I like that one. And at the end, of the, when he, he does that thing, he sometimes likes to do it sort of, you know, and now it's time for poetry with Lemmy. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you put a bit of music to it, like March or Die. The, yeah, March or Die on, um, yeah, March or Die, March or Die. Uh, but this one's Serial Killer. I, was like, I am the Serial Killer, I am the Bloody Hand. Like, if all those things, I've really only listened to it once or twice. Uh, yeah, got it off his chest, gave him a, an avenue to release his, his <laughs> spoken word with Lemmy. It was all right. Uh, so, yeah, and there was some bonus, the one of the, Strong one of the bonuses of this album was the um bonus tracks, brilliant version of Shoot You in the Back, and that's now on YouTube. The actual video for it that's in uh, that was Wacken Open Air, really good. They 
I'm really pleased they carried on playing that track. Really good. It was one of the ones, one of the old ones that they nailed with the the last lineup, Mickey D, Phil Campbell. And for me, that like I've already said, like Phil, um, Mickey D for me just steam hammered some of the songs too much. He didn't put sort of filthy Phil swinging. There was no reason why I should have a different drummer. But so for me, some of the songs just didn't work. But like Love Me Like a Reptile. It was just way too in him just forging ahead in that filthy Phil also that that little bit of swing as it were but that wasn't never an issue on shoot you on the back that was i mean that's a straight ahead rocker and they they nailed it um but one that not 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 to put on mickey d another one f- for me was uh the chase is better than the catch i don't know what it felt phil campbell playing it, it never it was never quite right and i like the original so much just where he starts it it's like no it goes it's, it's like you just want to say, it's, you know, what do I know? But just a fan. But it's like, don't, don't change it. You know, as great as it is, just, just play it. But I suppose everyone has to put their own identity or mark or stamp on it. Uh, and again, Ramones filmed at the same uh, thing. I don't feel the same passion for that song, but it's all right and it's over quick enough. So who cares? I, I, I recorded a Ramones track today. Blitzkrieg Pop. I listened to a bunch of Mo- uh, Ramones tracks just recently, like last week. Seeing, because I've never been able to get into them and I thought, I'll have another listen. It's been a few years. Every few years I come back to it. Blitzkrieg Pop is the only one I can listen to, really. And I, but where I'm going with this again, it's like, you know, who cares? But I, Lemmy was like fanatical about them. And I've never understood that, really. So he could be, he's fanatic about the Ramones. He was like really snotty about, say, the Jam. I, mean, I know they were very different bands, but to me, the Ramones weren't. They weren't that, I don't know, heavy or whatever. It's, it's one, two, three, four, go or something. But yeah. and the game, I oh, about the game, and if you can take it, it's all about the shame. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Something to do with wrestling or that one, isn't it? It's an alright song. So that was that, and I've already said on. Um, so I, it feels like a bit of a bitty review, but for me, it's it kind of matches the album for me because it's a bit of a bitty album. It's hard to sort of try and find some thread of, that runs through the album to get enthusiastic or to latch onto because it's kind of really up and down for me. So apology if it's, if you got this far listening to it and it's, it just seems a bit bitty, but that for me very much reflects the album. And I said on my review for We Are Motorhead, which came before this one in two thousand May two thousand. Uh, for me, things really got interesting. There was a sort of, for me, a bit of a meh peer on albums, punctuated for a few highlights, you know, a few tracks I like on the albums. Snakebite Love, We Are Motorhead, Hammered. But then Inferno, for me, would be like an Ace of Spades or a 1916. It was, well, right, okay, here we go. Motorhead's, yeah, they've, 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 this is genre changing type stuff, really. So, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there and I'm, I'm, fortunately for me the next album I'm going to have fun uh, the next album with you I'm going to have fun with because that will be for um, <laughs> the one I can't remember they did with Tam and Cameron Webb Inferno 